over 150 years, Monaco has reclaimed 40 hectares of land from the sea. And by 2020, the principality will conquer six more with a Portier Cove new offshore extension. Here's where the new eco districts will be. It will help Monaco continue to welcome new residents. Since 2012, 600 more people have been settling in the principality per year. There are not many countries that can expand without wars or annexation. Monaco needs this extension because we're cramped on two square kilometers, because high-rise construction and underground construction are not enough to answer our housing needs. They don't provide enough living space for the new residents who move to Monaco. Work should start in the last quarter of 2016 with the removal of protected marine species, which will be relocated in nearby natural reserves. Special screens will insulate the construction site to minimize its impact on the environment. The soft soil will be removed to lay bare the rocky seabed. It will be the foundation for a layer of rocky material. Reinforced hollow concrete box will stand on the site's borders, creating a protective belt, their facades designed to attract marine life. Sand will be injected into the concrete belt perimeter to create the artificial peninsula. Once all this is done, the urbanization phase can begin. The state of Monaco will own the offshore peninsula. There will be promenades, gardens, a new seafront promenade, and car parks and public spaces. The principality will see its territory expand by six hectares at no costs at all to the state. The €2 billion Euro project will be financed entirely by private construction companies. They'll profit from the sale of 60,000 square metres of luxury flats, villas and retail space. Among the architects involved is the father of the Pompidou Centre in Paris and the Shard in London, Renzo Piano. He will design a signature building at the entrance of the new marina. In the same way a sailboat is ecological by nature, a building that talks to the sea has to be ecological. One must feel the desire for lightness, the opposite of gluttony when it comes to energy. The building has to be able to take the sun's energy with solar panels. It has to be able to exchange heat with the sea. Together, the sun and the sea will provide 40% of the new district's energy needs. The Grimaldi Forum, built 15 years ago, is its role model. It's the process we use to capture and to use calories that's the precursor to this. We capture calories in the sea with the pumping stations, and these calories are then transferred to the heat pumps that create heat and cold. The building has seven underground floors and it's here, 20 metres below sea level, that the heating and air conditioning of all of its 75,000 square metres are controlled. We call this place the cathedral as a reference to all these pipes that surround us and remind us of the pipes of a church organ. For the site's creators, the Grimaldi building was the obvious template as, beyond the challenges linked to offshore construction, they're aiming for a synthesis of technology, beauty and ecology. Everybody dreams of building something on the water, but still people who take a walk have to be able to see the sea. So we need this building to float. We need it to be lifted. Nature will indeed be at the heart of the third and last episode of Monaco Life. See you very soon for a breath of fresh air in the Principality's Gardens.